How do I get it off? Okay, I've got 6.30, so we'll go ahead and call this work session to order. I don't want to do This is the... March 12th. March 12th. The March 12th work session of the mayor and council. It's Greg's birthday and I'm here. It's <laughs> 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 incentive to get out fast. <laughs> okay, so... First, we'll go over our regular meeting agenda. Um, we have a first read in Atlanta Motors or ATL Motors LLC. Any questions for Jason on that one at this point? And under new business, we have the second reading on the aggressive solicitation amendment. I didn't get any comments from anyone pro or con on this. Did anybody have anything they want to do? No, the only thing I was going to ask was can we, or is it against other issues to have anything for public property? The same kind of thing, because it specifically mentions private property and commercial property. So if we have an aggressive solicitor in front of City Hall in the campus. <laughs> they put public in this uh, yeah. in the draft. It also includes public. Yeah, well, I missed that. They said 15 feet, I believe, or 10. Yeah, 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 15 feet, but but still financial. Yeah, that doesn't cover the green or other. Right. I know we have something for parks, mm -hmm. but we don't we don't classify the green as a park at this point. So. If we have an aggressive solicitor there, mm -hmm. or do we have coverage somewhere else? The, you know, it, does, it really doesn't deal with gr the green. It deals with uh, public parking lots and public structures. So, I mean, here, and then and, and the parking lot into the green. Right. And then 10 feet from the entrance to a public building. But that was, that was only... Places. You think they're safe? No, I think you can get. I think you can get panhandle at the, at the aggressively at the at the those events. Can we stop that, or is that a pretty good speech? Well, so like we talked about, you, you will you will not be stepping any greater on the free speech exception <laughs> by <laughs> saying it's on the green. I mean, that, mm -hmm. that, that's the that's the battleground of this area of regulation is. Okay. I mean, we could we could add a provision to this that said, you know, check it instead of you, you could add public parking lot, public parking structure. You could add public area to that list, and and uh, you know, and it's it's really six, you know, public park or public green space. Mm -hmm. We can do that tonight. Yes. Yeah. yeah okay. Y'all are doing. Y'all. Y'all have the. Y'all. I'd feel better if we'd add that. You can. You. Your. Your. Your legislative body in session. You can change uh -huh. as you go. Uh -huh. uh -huh. So okay. added the word public park. Okay. So you'll want to when you make the motion. You just need to make the motion. Um, you can reference this draft, this ordinance, but with the amendment of item six. Yeah, change item six. Item six. Say, and I'll mark it for you. And have okay. It for you too. Change item six to add public park. Public, mm -hmm. is that right? Public park? public park? Is that what you said? Yes. Public park. Public. Okay. Oh, <coughs> that would okay. just cover us for stat events on the green, for the farmer's market, for, I mean, I, I think that would be a good idea to have that. I knew you would. Thank you. Be perspective for the town center, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, I, I would hope that sometimes with people like that, just having a police officer go up to mm -hmm. them and talk to them is enough to move them along. Mm -hmm. That's all we're really going to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let them go back mm -hmm. to Ross. We'll go back to Sandy Springs. We'll move it up there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, please go. Go back to Green We got an ordinance that says you can't. 
And, and what it really does is, is when they're doing that and they're violating it, that means they're also committing criminal trespass mm -hmm. because you're on a property and committing something with an unlawful purpose. So you also have that as a backup too. So what we really will probably do is ask them to leave and put them on trespass notice and hopefully have them come back. Yeah. So hopefully it's just a short conversation with the officer. Every time we've ever asked them to go, they'll go. But, you know, they they just kind of go from place to place and we wait for somebody. We don't, we've really not moved them on our own motion. We've waited for a complaint to, to deal with them. But this now says that we can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, anything else on that? Mm -hmm. Then we've got the uh, award of the bid for the uh, pool contract, positively pools. We have had them for uh, the previous five years. They do a great job, and uh, basically for the same amount of money that uh, um, they've been charging, they will continue. I think there's, what, a $200 difference, something like that? Highly recommended. Okay, then we have um, two stormwater projects to approve. We do. Um, projects that emergency projects that took some engineering so it took a little while to get here but uh, the bid was very strong from uh, uh, from Dickerson yeah. who has done our projects for the last three years yeah, yeah well, I noticed uh, that, some of that. <coughs> but, uh, they have a very good very good uh, system set up and uh, <coughs> they are uh, um, yeah, high, highly recommended and 62 570 so it is a uh, um, and they've done other projects. <coughs> yeah. that have been and it's within, uh, um, you know, the original bids came in so low. This is within our, our overall budget that we have there. So um, they're, uh, they just have a good way of... Uh, and we're going to have a gay out there on a jet back truck getting things prepped. The, uh, um, well, we <laughs> <laughs> She can drive it if you want her to. I know, I know. <laughs> she probably can. All right, then we have the two uh, declarations of taking for the Aguero and the DR property. We changed those just slightly from the draft that was in here at the agenda uh, packet. And, and we, what we did, we, we corrected the time that they caught that we had a 7 o'clock time period that should have been 7.30 in the recitals. So we fixed that. And then uh, we also, and this is uh, the... This is the Aguero version. And this is the DDR version. So I think that's one and two in the resolution numbering system. And then um, uh, we added a clause that really uh, is a, a recital. It's the third recital provision that really puts the blame on the reason why we need to file the condemnation action on the right party. And with the, with the Agueros, Butch had worked out the, the money and the deal with them. It was, it was a little complicated because the Agueros are, are not married anymore. And so they were, they were dividing these proceeds. And, and then the, the, actually the lender has interceded and is not releasing the property for their settlement. So the condemnation is being caused by a combination of the Dodd-Frank regulations and, and, and how the bank's being regulated. And then secondly, uh, just some over-aggressiveness uh, of a lender, uh, which we're finding in, in, in almost every case. In, in the, uh, the DDR situation, which is the, the, the second one, uh, DDR has not been forthcoming with the deeds. They, they keep promising us. They promised them today. They didn't arrive today. And so, so that, then we've got a lender now involved in their release that we're communicating with. But in that case, we put the responsibility on DDR because they've had a lot of time to really get themselves in a position that haven't satisfied their settlement amount, which was, uh, I, which worked it out where we were paying them and uh, the amount that was an agreed to sum also, but they just did not close the deal. And, and I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing it is, but I think that has a lot to do with the, um, the other issues that are pending. 
What was the um, last time we spoke about the property? What were the numbers on that? Like the were they owed? I think two hundred thousand or something. And or none of these. Something. These are all. These are ten and twenty five. Uh, in DDR is 10, Aguero is 25. <coughs> Are you thinking of Polanco? Yeah, yeah, Polanco. Yeah, probably. Polanco yeah. is a little sliver. That's an executive session. Yeah, it's a little bit. We'll we'll definitely, we'll get to that. Yeah. yeah, these two are just small little pieces out in front. Yeah, this is at North and Fars. And, uh, and we had a conversation with uh, Lewis Cooksey. We know when the award date is. and. Uh, Tony knows the deadline. Yes, to me. We're not going to miss it. So, so we're we're about the business. If they want to close, fine. If not, the resolution gives us the authority to file the declaration of taking in those instances. So. And next up, we have um, the property easement for Old North Road, which is the Shell Station for their improvements. Mm -hmm. We, the, the Tony and Chuck, worked out the legal language for the easement. Once it was determined, it was our roadway to grant an easement on it. Uh, they have submitted plans to uh, uh, to Jason's office as far as what they will do. They won't get a permit until those are, are uh, approved through uh, uh, planning and zoning. So I think we're ready to go. Okay, any questions on that? Okay, next then we have the approval of the fee schedule for planning and development has to do with all the alcohol adding the farm wineries and the breweries. Uh, and then we have the approval of the opioid attorney, attorney's fees agreement. Just one thing on the on the fee schedule. I know Roger, I, I listened to the video from last time. I know Roger and Gretchen had uh, uh, some questions. Um, the administrative fee that Gretchen uh, uh, pointed out is a first time only fee. Um, and uh, it's not paid every year. The license fee is paid every year. Uh, it's $500 in Snellville, and calling around uh, <coughs> $500 in Lawrenceville, $1,000 in Swanee, $250 in Duluth, and $500 in Athens. Mm -hmm. So we are um, uh, less than Swanee and right in line with um, Lawrenceville and Athens. So um, that's that's what I found out about that. Could I ask about the opioid agreement? Yes. Um, uh, I didn't realize we were going to be actually voting on this tonight. And I, I'm just not sure. I feel like I have all the information that I read this um, fee agreement and see that, you know, the percentage that we would pay to Beasley Allen, you know, then I assume we would have other expenses. We'd have attorney fees for your, no, Tony, no? Now, okay. there's, there's uh, uh, the, the, it is a standard, what, what I think of as a plaintiff's percentage case. Mm -hmm. it's, it's one third goes to the lawyers. Mm -hmm. the, 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 there is, <coughs> if it's unsuccessful, there is no cost to the city, which is sort of a standard way a lot, you know, Lives. Products Lives. liability, right. medical right. malpractice, all of those yeah. kind of cases are handled on a contingent basis. The, so if there's cost incurred, which would be an expert witnesses and that sort of thing, then the, those costs would not, if, if there was no recovery, it wouldn't, but they would be paid out of the recovery if there was a recovery. So they just sort of come off the top, whatever the cost or expenses of, the, of trying the case or expert witnesses are. And then the next And then if, if we would... If they do not win the case, we still bear the cost of those. We do not owe anything. We do not. Mm -hmm. There's no okay. risk to the city in pursuing the matter. What about all the, I mean, I assume there'd be uh, some time involved, say, for the police department for depositions and investigation, that type of thing for this? Would there not it be? Would not be? It would not be a pay. We would sort of, be, I think we'd be expected to make those people available to the extent um, they were they were needed, and, you know. We, but I, uh, I would not anticipate having a big role to play in that because it's a it's a nationwide mm -hmm. event. Okay. And, it's know. really some data gathering. From what what was the attorney's name? 
Yeah. The but attorney that was here. I remember meeting, the attorney here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it sounded to me like more of they're going to send out a spreadsheet and we're going to need to fill in some, some more for them. Okay. Insurance okay. costs and, you know, some other things like Just that. Just out of so. curiosity, Chief, what what is the magnitude of the opioid problem here in Snellville? Can you characterize it? We uh, <coughs> used Narcan three times this month. Mm. Um, we had two no, deaths. You used nor is that a what it like an antidote? An antidote? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Except that now there's a strain of fentanyl that uh, Narcan doesn't work on. Mm -hmm. So, but it does work. Uh, and even now, it's taken because of them putting even putting fentanyl in it, whether it's that thing or not. Sometimes it takes a whole lot more than one dose to bring them around. And you know, we have, every officer has it. Of course, fire department has it, EMS has it, so we, we can do more. But there's probably been three deaths since the first of the year that are probably overdoses, accidental overdoses, where nobody called in time. Okay. Well, I just wanted a little more what information. Is, what, what this is, I'm confused about is this suit is against the manufacturers. Mm -hmm who have provided a product that people have abused, and yet the manufacturers are being sued. Kind of like tobacco companies. Mm -hmm. same it's, the same, it's the same theory. It's, well, I won't say what I was going to say. Gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> it's a money maker for somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Can you spell attorney? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that gives me a little pause as it well. It does, too. Because mm -hmm. I was just, yeah. you know, I mean, again, it's, where it's not my fault. I'm stupid. It's not my fault. Or I don't read the label. Up well, the north, they, they actually have some places where they won't allow their officers to carry Narcan or administer it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and there's all kinds of arguments like, well, we don't carry insulin and we don't mm -hmm. carry any other drug to help people mm -hmm. like that. But uh, but there are, we do have the expenses to buy the Narcan right. and all that. So there are some expenses associated with and, and I think one of one of the bottom lines is just like the tobacco companies tried to hide mm -hmm. research that showed the, the dangers and the damage. I think uh, uh, the Sacklers and other opioid producers have done the same thing. So, and it become you know it, it, there's the there's the the downside of of this type of litigation is you know it's 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 created for lawyers. Mm -hmm. But the but the reality of it is is that that's the tool that's been used historically to correct tortious mm -hmm. conduct, and so it's 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 a penalty. It's a penalty that goes at people that need to change, and you can do it a couple of ways. You can you can you know federal government can step in and regulate and try and create rules, or you can create exposure that causes people to govern their own conduct, and so there is a there there is a a. Correcting factor that uh, these types of that this type of litigation imposes, which is a which was the, it's it's really been the way that uh, historically our system of laws has used as the mechanism for stopping abusive situations. So and that's what the goal. Yeah, of it here. Yeah, mm -hmm. this one is this one is sort of out of control immediately and very powerful on the other side. The legislative, the legislative aspect hadn't happened. Uh, this is a pretty quick remedy uh, to, to get some immediate correct action. And what is, what is the fix? Lower making high doses unavailable? Or well, actually, what's really happening now is that with the uh, abuse of the prescription drugs, which have been so readily e available and easy to get. Mm -hmm. Well, now it's making a resurgence of heroin because heroin is right. the same thing, and it's a whole lot cheaper. Hmm. Uh, you know, it's a lot more difficult because you're you're actually involved in a lot more criminal enterprise mm -hmm. to, to get it. But um, but the but the real problem we've had for the last several years are all the exponential overdoses that have happened off of prescription medication. And I, personally, I think a lot of this needs to come back to the doctors who well, the, are just yeah, very readily the there first thing they give you, you know, absolutely, and and as much as you want. As three years ago, the legislature passed the prescription monitoring mm -hmm. legislation, but they never funded it. 
So now if you go to your doctor and you go to the Publix and you go to your doctor and you go to another doctor and you go to Walmart and you go to another doctor and you go to CVS, you're going to get all three. Whereas if you had the right. PMS and prescription monitor. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying <laughs> it was <laughs> that? That would keep that from occurring. But, but then it's just going to put you in it's a sad state of affairs. Yes. <laughs> well, the other issue that you've got with the powdered fentanyl is that, I mean, I've read reports where a police officer just mm -hmm. searching somebody's car yeah. opened the console it. and some of the powder came out from where it mm. had been in there and the police officer dropped, um, needed two doses of the, what is it? Narcan. Narcan. Before he got back to his car. Oh my gosh. He collapsed that quickly. And so it's, it puts our yeah. officers in danger. Really and we're also basically stopping the field testing of drugs, which is how a lot of that occurs too. If we really think that's what it is, we have a reason to believe that we're not going to test it, we're just going to send it to the crime lab. Yeah. The downside for the person is we're probably going to charge them because that's what we think it is, and it comes back to be something else. So, you know, that problem calls. Right. Okay. So it, it, it does go deep and far and wide. Um, I don't know if you're if you read the GMA news line, but it's several of the cities oh, yeah. are, are signed. They're in. Counties are too. Right. And then everybody's getting on board in their policies and several different districts. We talked about that before. Athens and now Oakville County's joined them mm -hmm. in the middle district. This is going to be in the northern district. So I imagine they'll all be joined at some point in time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are these attorneys doing this for just this part of the country? The attorney no. that we talked about. It's going to be happening all over. Well, I mean, yeah. no. Is their firm representing just... Well, they're representing the state of Alabama. I know yeah, that he said Alabama. No, yeah. yeah. he's got Ohio he cases. That's said. right, he did yeah. say Ohio, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, okay. Several. That's so I wondered that, too, if it was just a southeastern... But the chief is right. It, it, these, these types of big cases like this end up pulled together in, in a central location you know, mm -hmm. in a single group of combined law firms actually working on it. So. There's a John Grisham book that goes through the whole process. Yeah. I don't yeah. remember which one it was. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's one of the recent ones. Yeah, I think I read your copy. Yeah. Of it. yeah. I think um, I got it here at City Hall. Okay, so that's everything on the public agenda. Yeah, any correspondence? No, no. Any correspondence? Only that uh, I need uh, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Update of ongoing projects. <coughs> Long executive session, so we'll try to move through this a little quicker. Uh, uh -huh. Part of the executive session needs to be about the town center. Uh, the market library progress, uh, the review committee met and shortlisted five firms. Those interviews will be held Thursday from 8 a.m. to approximately 3.30. Uh, you all are invited to uh, to listen in. They, uh, um, I think, we'll have uh, five good good presentations. Uh, marketing Snellville. Uh, I think last time the meeting that I missed, I think you got the priority list from Brian. Uh, continue to review that and add or take away. Uh, we've begun planning on uh, uh, several of the items. Um, Dave, we do need to have a, a discussion. One of the suggestions you had was uh, the local civic dinners. Mm -hmm. So we need to sit down and work out the specifics there so we can bring back to the next meeting uh, uh, the, the, all the, the, the facts and how people can join in and when we're gonna, when we're gonna hold it. So um, that was just one of, the, uh, one of the ideas. We also had a, a meeting this week with uh, with Barbara and uh, Kelly McAloon and we discussed ribbon cutting. Uh, so we are going to bring a ribbon cutting procedure back to everybody where we really need everybody on board. There are, uh, when, when uh, a, a new business comes into town, we really need to put our best foot forward with them. And we've been kind of taking a back seat and waiting on the chambers to, to have ribbon cuttings and and uh, uh, grand openings and we feel like there aren't too many that where we can kind of do a much better job of, of showing how much the city supports them and their investment in the community but it is going to take everybody because they want to see an elected official there 
They want to see the police department. They want to see the staff and uh, uh, economic development. So uh, we're, we've, we've got a plan, but we're going to ask for everybody's, everybody's help. But we know you guys, you know, you're kind of limited to the summertime, but during the summer, we, we need you. I'm there. So we'll, uh, um, we'll <laughs> bring that back food. next time. <laughs> Just make sure that our food, Christy, will be there. Yeah, any there, type though. of food, no problem. <laughs> and actually, the Youth Commission would really like to get involved with a that piece, Absolutely. Yeah. We, mm -hmm. and, yes. and that's, I mean, what says more about a city than active mm -hmm. youth right. like that, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, there's a lot of things we can do, and, and um, we're, we're going to do a better job of that. They shouldn't have to pay. Uh, for a chamber membership to cut a ribbon. So, um, town hall meetings. Uh, I talked with the DOT district engineer. Uh, he is uh, going to be coming to to Snellville with the new uh, project manager for uh, uh, for the, the 78 124 uh, project, and we'll try to get on on their schedule for. We'll get several. Uh, Possibilities in probably in April for a, for a town hall. Uh, the UDO once again it's connected to the comp plan. Uh, we are uh, coordinating with uh, uh, Jacobs on the comp plan, uh, and we'll probably probably have a meeting with uh, Jacobs and TSW to sort of look at both schedules and see how, where we where we can overlap best. Um, roundabout construction. Uh, we know we have an April award uh, of a contract. The bids are out at North and Fars. Uh, as I said, we, we feel like we'll meet that deadline, and uh, um, I'll bring the information back to you at, at, at that time. Uh, 78 and 124, all I can tell you is the work is progressing on the, um, on the I guess, the west end of, of the project. They're starting along Clower. You can see a lot of the clearing. Uh, they've done a lot of the underground work. But uh, uh, it's, it's been a slow go so far. Um, really not an update on business retention and attraction. 2017 SPLOS program, you have uh, underneath, uh, you have a, a plan of, the, uh, um, of the, the little turn lane project at Ridgedale and, and North. Uh, this is, uh, the, the county just performed what's called a field plan review with the engineer and all of their internal folks, uh, and they're going over notes now. But you can see uh, um, uh, the Kroger driveway and then the, the turn lane that extends all the way to, uh, to north down, down Ridgedale. Uh, and you can see there'll be an island, a pedestrian island, and then the right turn lane there. So um, that should, should move traffic a little better. Uh, There'll be another review, and I'll bring those notes and, and, and a final plan. But this is a, a good idea of where we are right now, uh, as far as one of the 2017 projects. Um, higher education outreach, still no, uh, uh, no response to share. Uh, US 78 sidewalk, basically we're working on a punch list. Um, it looks good, people are using it, getting a little rain for the grass, so uh, as long as it doesn't get too cold this week, uh, we should have some green grass out there in the spring. Uh, comp plan progress, as I said, uh, we need to have a, a joint meeting with uh, the TSW to bring information back there. <coughs> Senior Center Utilization, uh, Gretchen is coming in and we're going to meet with Lisa and Kathy tomorrow to go over uh, schedules and possibilities at the Senior Center. Um, ordinance development, we I'm have sorry, the aggressive... what time are you all meeting? Uh, 10. 10 o'clock. Yeah. Okay. 10 um, <laughs> okay. Ordinance development. Uh, we have the aggressive solicitation ordinance tonight. Uh, a lot of other things are, are, are being worked on. Um, and uh, uh, SDS negotiations, there was a good discussion at the Intergovernmental Relations Committee uh, last week between all, all the cities. And uh, there has been a, a, a committee formed for us to. Um, send our comments to so all the cities can develop a strategy for dealing with uh, Gwinnett County in, in that area. Um, and as far as long-term planning is concerned, the uh, budget process is still ongoing, but I also put a, uh, a draft resolution uh, at, your, at your chairs. I think everybody, everybody got it. I would ask uh, everybody to look at this. Uh, there is a uh, 
major transit effort uh, update <clears throat> going on in Gwinnett County. They're working with Kinley Horn. And uh, in, in the past, Snellville has uh, actually passed resolutions uh, stating that they were uh, uh, opposed, uh, without any questions, opposed to uh, transit improvements. Uh, I think we're well past the time of, uh, of changing that, uh, that position. Uh, in the initial discussions, uh, there are, you have a couple of uh, pages here uh, called mid-range proposals. Uh, there are a couple of connections that I think we should be very supportive of. Uh, uh, transit connections right now, just uh, Gwinnett County Transit connections from Lawrenceville to Snellville and then from Snellville into the uh, uh, Indian Creek Marta Station down 78. <coughs> so um, please look at this. Uh, I'd like for you to consider adoption uh, in, in the future. Uh, I think we need to get on board with, with supporting what, what the county is working on as far as transit and other transportation options. That's all I have. Any questions? Right. Okay, so we are at during the work session of the mayor and city council in Snellville, Georgia. You know if I know. Mayor Pro Tem Bender announced that certain matters should be discussed in a closed session of the meeting and asked.